If you're using Entity Framework, you probably heard that you should use the repository pattern. But in the last 12 years of working with .NET professionally, this wasn't always the best choice. And you also said it under one of my last videos. So let me show you why using the repository pattern with Entity Framework could be holding you back and when you should actually use it. You see, the repository pattern is often used to abstract data access like this example here. So you've got this interface here, an I generic repository with all the CRUD operations, adding or creating an entity, reading something, this is done with the get all async and the get by ID async method, and then also updating, of course, and deleting. And then we have an implementation like this generic repository here, injecting a database context and also a DB set and doing all kinds of stuff with that. So this is the classic repository pattern you might see in tutorials or even in your own projects, right? But there's a catch. Entity Framework actually already is a repository pattern under the hood. And if you now hit the like button, I will tell you even more. Entity Framework has built-in data access methods that act like a repository. It provides the DB set that already handles common operations like adding, updating, or deleting. So when you add another repository layer like this, you're just adding more code without necessarily adding more value. And here's why that's a problem. You're adding a layer that duplicates functionality. It doesn't make the code simpler, it makes it harder to maintain. Wrapping every query in a repository method can mean writing more complex code in the end that's less optimized than using Entity Framework directly and especially in small projects, using the repository pattern is overkill. It's just more boilerplate code. Take a look at this example where we get a list of products. The first one injects the repository with the help of dependency injection and calls the get all async method. And the second example injects the database context directly, accesses all products and simply returns them. Do you see the difference? With the repository pattern, you have to write more boilerplate code just to wrap a simple method, but without it, Entity Framework makes your queries straightforward and you gain direct access to powerful features like ASNO tracking or include for eager loading. All right, but now when should you use the repository pattern? Here's the thing. If your application has complex business logic or you want to easily swap out Entity Framework, for another data access library, then using a repository pattern can make sense. It can help isolate your data access logic and make your code more testable. Here's an example of a repository using Entity Framework. We're implementing the iGeneric repository interface for our products, then inject the DB context and DB set and have all the logic in there, right? And here's then an alternative for a testing scenario. So a mock product repository, if you want. So again, implementing the I generic repository for our products, but then we have a mock list of products already that we then can use for our testing purposes, for instance. You see how we can easily swap out Entity Framework now with this mock repository for testing purposes. This is one of those scenarios where a repository pattern might actually be helpful. And if you're wondering how exactly swapping these implementations works and if you want to dive deeper into the technology behind it you should definitely check out this video here on the screen.